Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here with the Stamina Necro build that absolutely rocks. It's a brute. It's one of the hardest hitting combos with Blast Bones and Dizzying Swings and some of the most survivable build in the game. It's going to take a bit of practice and a bit of timing to get this down, but if you can, the Wambo Bambo combo and the sheer raw survivability is going to be incredible. So let's get into it. Before you pick this build up, what do you need to know about this damn Necro? The pros, it's incredibly survivable due to the class abilities and passives. You do very little but keep some buffs up and you're very survivable. It's great solo or in a group. You have great group utility, but you can 1vx due to your sheer amount of survivability and your burst potential. It's built in with a nuke like Blast Bones. It is harder hitting than Deep Fissure. It doesn't give major and minor breach though, but it can hit absolutely hard and it's AoE. It fires off like a missile and that's the whole premise of the build skill. The cons, it lacks mobility and it requires constant buffs. So this is very difficult to get your brain wrapped around if you're new to PvP, but you're gonna have a five to 10 second burst window and you're going back reapplying three to four buffs and doing it again. You're not gonna be very good at this build if you tunnel vision. You need to peel back, buff, and then bang, strike very violent and very sudden. If you like that play style, pick this up. Now let's talk about the gear first and then we'll switch and talk about the skills and how to use it. The build center around a mythic from the high elves called Sea Serpent Coil. While you're at full health, you get damage reduction, which helps against gankers. And the reason we use this is when you take damage while you're at full health, you're going to get 10 seconds of major berserk and major courage. This is essentially two five pieces in one. It is considered the meta mythic right now and is absolutely staggering because it carries all of your damage in a one piece mythic. The downside is you're snared. So by 40%, we can get around this by using major expedition, which I'll get to a little bit later, and then running three swift jewelry and the orc race. Don't even notice it. So that's how I get around a sea serpent coil. Three alternatives, Markins, Ring of Majesty, really good all around. Torque, if you struggle with resource sustain and then Gaze of Sithis, though it'll require you to switch up the build a little bit. So that's gonna carry our damage and it's gonna be a little bit annoying to get the snare, but you'll get used to it. Back bar defensive set. This is only gonna be active on our back bar and it's Mara's Bomb. This has gone through a lot of changes, but it's extraordinarily strong still. It cleanses when you have six or more effects, 15 second cooldown, but it also heals you while you're getting negative effects applied to you. So there's constant Dragonite's applying all these negative effects to you and it carries your survivability when you're on your back bar. You do have to be cognizant of Plague Break. So if you get a cleanse on the wrong time and you're stacked on a bunch of people, it can go boom. But it's worth the risk because the survivability is so incredibly noticeable. Some alternatives for you, Rallying Cry. Great group utility, but it lacks the survivability, raw survivability, Mars Bomb. Powerful Assault, what I run in a group. Clever Alchemist, if you want the ultimate burst potential on your back bar and don't sleep on Robes of the Hiss. This is also a very good alternative to Morris Bomb. So that's gonna be our defensive. Our offensive by piece on the front, only active is Essence Thief. This comes from the White Gold Tower. What it does is a lot. It gives us great resource sustain because when you lighter heavy attack, it's gonna proc a pool, a little green effect you see me in this footage. It's gonna give us stamina and it's gonna give us health. And it's gonna give us 10% damage for 10 seconds. That 10% stacks on top of Major Berserk. So that's right. You're rocking right around 6,000 weapon damage or so with 20% increased damage. And you're super tanky. This is incredible five piece. It is tricky to use, especially in open world because that pool, that essence can go a lot of different places. However, that's why I use a frost staff on my back bar and I can proc it and cheese it in kind of a different unique way and making it a lot easier to use. Some great alternatives in case you don't want to use essence thief. Stoon's favor. This is going to give you a lot of penetration when you set someone off balance using dizzying swing. Plague break if you like the big, huge AOE nuke bomb plays. Order's Wrath, very good craftable set alternative. And now we're getting to the Monster Helm and Balorg. So with this setup running Essence Thief, I really don't struggle with resource sustain running Tripods. So I go with Balorg because it provides the most burst. The more ultimate you save and when you use it, the harder it hits. You're going to get pen, you're going to get uh, weapon and spell damage, and it's going to be absolute nukes. You can actually save up to 500 in between fights for a super violent sudden blast bone D-swing combo that levels everybody. And that's typically what you see. But don't be afraid to use your ultimate a little earlier if you need to, just because you can finish off targets targets and it'll give you a little bit of emphasis on weapon and uh, pen. One of the best burst potential uh, two pieces in the game. Magma Incarnate's another great alternative, just all around group and solo. And then don't sleep on Engine Guardian. If you struggle with the resources thing, you just can't get the Necro down. This will carry your survivability and your resources thing. And then we have a one piece left and that's just trainee base game. You can get on guild traders as well. It just gives you a one piece health. 
and then Druid's Braid also gives you a one piece health, just a little bit less than trainee. We're gonna pull up the gear chart here, and what we got is Essence Thief on our front bar, two handed maul for the pen, sharpen trait with Escapist Poisons. Escapist Poison just lock people down with immobilization. Back bar, we're gonna run an Ice Staff with Mara's Balm. The reason I use the Ice Staff, you can light attack and build resources at range. You can fully charge heavy attack and get magic back. You don't slot the Tri-Focus passive and you use stamina to block just like Sword and Shield and it also gives you the same mitigation as Sword and Shield. It doesn't cut your enchant in half and it doesn't cut your trait in half, making it very, very good. You can also light attack, bar swap, and if you land the light attack on your front bar, it will proc Essence Thief as you close the gap and that's the trick to using this. So I'm gonna run three heavy, three medium, one light. The traits are gonna be three sturdy, three well fitted. So we're blocking a little bit when we're getting ulti dumped or when we expect a lot of pressure or need to calm down. We're gonna run well fitted because we like the dodge roll here and there and one reinforce heavy in the chest for the max amount of armor. The glyphs, prismatic in the big pieces, head, chest and legs, those give you the most bang for your buck, stamina on the rest of them. And then we're gonna run three swift, which is critical uh, traits on the jewelry with weapon damage. The reason I'd run three weapon damage, I don't need stamina recovery if I'm running the Essence Thief loadout because it's just so strong and resource sustain. And the three swift really counters the Sea Serpent Coil, you don't even notice it. This gives you a blend of huge weapon damage and a massive amount of penetration, plus big huge buffs with Essence Thief and Sea Serpent Coil absolutely deletes. Now let's talk about the skills real quick. I'm gonna run these down and then I'm gonna show you in the gameplay footage how to use them. Blast Bones, this is our main nuke at range. You're gonna maintain as priority number one. Rally, it's gonna give us a bunch of buffs, mainly our weapon damage and a little bit of recovery. And it's gonna give you a burst heal when you let it apply. It's Camouflage Hunter, this is mainly slotted for the crit damage. It makes your build very simple and it hits harder with the Fighter's Guild giving you 3% weapon damage for slotting it. Consider this your flex spot. You like a gap closer, you use Stampede. You need more resources, you use Mortal Coil. You wanna get more ultimate and you use Necrotic Potence. The list goes on and on and on, but consider this your flex spot. D-Swing, this is a uh, channel, sets enemies off balance. You can consume the off balance by doing a medium weave, meaning just a little bit longer than a light attack to stun them. That's how you get a stun off. It's annoying to use, and a lot of people use Scythe instead, but Scythe hits like a noodle. It does hit AoE and it does heal you, but D-Swing, time and time again just provides the most burst single target possible and then executioner this is our finisher so you can use this right around 35 percent health or lower into after a d swing combo and then dawn breaker this is going to be part of the lambo bambo combo i'm going to explain a little bit back bar mainly just buffs and healing so i use summoner's armor for my armor buff I use Spirit Guardian for a little bit of damage reduction, a little bit of healing. I use Race Against Time for mobility and minor force crit buff. I use Resistance Flesh as a magic dump, oh crap, heal. And then I use Resolving Vigor as my heal over time and also minor resolve. So you can see on this back bar, we essentially have four buffs that we can be keeping up every 20 seconds or so with one on our front. That's five buffs if you're doing this right. And a back bar temporal guard. This is an oh crap, like zhoom, puts you back in time. Very tough to use this and get this down, but it can be like crazy huge clutch plays. Plus just slotting it gives us minor protection. Yes, Sigic Order is annoying to get, but these two things make it worth it. Okay, now we got this down. Let's explain how to use this in the burst combination. So we've already talked about the buffs. You need to maintain your buffs. Remember, five to 10 second window. If you're going beyond five to 10 second window, you're tunnel visioning and you're gonna get blown up. So typically what I do, I start on my front bar. I got rally up, I maybe fire a blast bones and I get on my back bar. I do my armor, spear guardian, race against time, resolving vigor. Now I got that five to 10 second window. I go, I do a light attack on my back bar. Then I quickly bar swap. Hopefully the frost light attack hits a player, spawns the essence thief. I immediately cast the blast bones. I walk to the essence thief, pick it up and then cast D swing when I'm in range. As soon as the dizzying swing lands, I do a medium weave to stun them. Now Blast Bones should hit right at the exact time that I stun them and then I do a Dawn Breaker and then I do an Executioner. If this looks right, it will look kind of glitchy. You'll basically do so much damage in a short window. You'll also notice sometimes in this footage when I hit an Executioner, I dodge roll. It will actually land and clip the animation so you almost don't even see it. That's a nice way to get a little bit more damage and quicker during this combo. So again, you keep your buffs up on the back. You light attack before you bar swap, blast bones, close the distance, D swing, medium weave, or a fully charged heavy attack to proc the follow passive of the two hander, dawn breaker, executioner, absolutely melted one target or more. All right, let's finish up the miscellaneous in the champion point. So I go 32 attributes and 32. So three, 32 in health, 32 in the stamina. 
right about 32,000 health or higher inside the content that you play. Typically, I play Battlegrounds with no champion points, so right around 32,000, but I would stick with that. The faster your reaction time, the lower your HP can be, but I like 32 as a sweet spot. My character is an orc, and I run the warrior Mundus, though. The reason I use the orc passive really is that you get a little bit of healing, but it's that speed. Weapon damage and spell damage, and that speed when you're sprinting plus reduced cost of sprinting, Perfect for a Sea Serpent Coil build. Pulling up the champion points in the green tree doesn't perfect performance too much, but two that do is Gifted Rider and Warm Out inside of Cyrodiil, and then I go with Seed's Blessing and Rationer as my options here. Moving over to the blue tree. So Master at Arms, Duelist Rebuff, and then the best mitigation one is right here, Ironclad. Moving on to the offensive one, and that's uh, Exploiter. So we're doing off balance when Dizzy and Swing. This will give us the most damage possible. Keep in mind, Occultal Overload is a good option now, but it's going to be nerfed in the future. So if you like the big, huge nukes with Plague Break, you want to slot Scythe instead and kind of be a bomber, take this, drop Dizzying Swing for Scythe, but just keep in mind, this will be nerfed in the future. Moving over to the Red Tree, we're going to go with Fortified for some more armor. Survival Instincts, when you have a status effect on you, this is going to reduce the cost of blocking, dodging, basically all the things that require a lot of stamina. Perfect for us. Um, Pain's Refuge, so the more status effects we have on us, the more damage reduction we have. And then the key one here for open world is Celerity. So Sea Serpent's Coil is a kind of a pain. You got this, shouldn't be a problem for you. And lastly up are consumables. So I use Tripod Potions. You can use the Crown Store or just make them yourself. Also Drain Health or Escapist Poisons. They're very expensive. A one will do a mobilization. I don't even have one on me because I use it. I'm broke. And then you can run crit potions if you don't have the camel hunter slotted on your front bar and run another set. But you really need to use crit potions. The crit buff is so vital for this build. And for food, I run the smoke bear haunch, though jewels of mystery is another good option. It's much, much cheaper with just a little bit less max stats. Well, gang, that's a video. I'll try to get this real quick out to you. It's very, very good, and it shouldn't be changed much going forward for the next four to five months, hopefully. So make sure to like and subscribe if you like this content. Come check me out on twitch.tv slash Gaming, where I play and test these builds live and interact with you, the community. Thanks for watching.